Hey all you VIP Kid teachers out there. I've had a lot of you asking recently about what do I need to do to get hired with VIP Kid. I have probably had about eight, eight or nine emails this week asking this question. The reason they're asking is because it seems to me they are feeling a little bit overwhelmed looking at the process of passing the mock classes with VIP Kit. So I'd like to share with you today just a few quick tips about how to pass that mock class. Now, I am not going to walk through the mock class with you, and I'm not going to talk about each slide. Plenty of teachers have done that on YouTube already. What I really want to do is just talk a little bit about the connection you make between you and your student or mock mentor. So number one, be friendly. Be friendly. And by that, you can smile a lot. Today, I just finished teaching 10 classes. I hurt right here on my face because I was smiling the whole time. <laughs> All right, very good. And number two, use good gestures. One thing I am noticing is with applicants, they tend to use their gestures in here. So sometimes they will be listening for a student to speak and they will be using everything right here close to their bodies. I suggest that you use all of your gestures out wide. So when you are counting out a word for a student, and I suggest that you do that, this is my mom. I suggest you keep your gestures out wide and up so the students can see them clearly. Sometimes I see teachers do this when they're trying to count the words out of a sentence during their, um, when they send me a video and they're practicing for their mock. So they're doing this. My suggestion is to get it right out here where it can be seen. This is my Dad. Very good. Get your hand up. If you're bringing it down in here close, it doesn't tend to make the statement. When I was studying public speaking in college, I was taught, get your gestures out here, right? Get it out at least where your elbows are at their natural resting point, And you want your gestures to be wide. So get your gestures up and out. That's very helpful when we're talking about using TPR in our classrooms, okay? The other thing I highly suggest to remember is use the red words first. So take those red words and teach them first before you have your student read it. So if the word, let's say, is dad, you would say, dad, dad, dad. Very good. And then circle the sentence and give them a chance to read. My favorite gesture for when I want my student to speak is to, or read is to gesture my hand out. So I tend to do this, and then I'll wait when I want them to speak. But I always put my hand out. Um, a, a lot of people do it a different way, but I tend to be like, it's your turn. <laughs> and my students have got to know, especially my regulars, when I do this, it's like, your turn. <laughs> and I have many of my students that do it in return to me. They'll go <laughs> to me. So keep those gestures out wide. Make sure you're teaching those red words at the very beginning. So you teach them the word that they might have a hard time with and that is new to them, right? 
so they get a chance to get a running start and read that sentence. The other thing I would highly suggest is to vary your voice, vary your voice. Sometimes I tend to catch myself getting into that same mode of reading the sentence, they read the sentence, I read it, and I have to change things up a little bit. So sometimes I will if a student is having a hard time, for example, dropping the article, I will say, this is a dog. And they will say, this is a dog, right back to me. This is the store. I will tend to make a big deal out of that word. Sometimes I will even point to that finger of the word. This is the dog or store, whatever. So I point to that finger and I kind of make it a big deal. So they get the idea. I need to pay attention to that word. So that's something that I highly suggest that you do. Um, these are just some, some examples of things that you can do. The last thing and the most important is build rapport. I think this is a big one. This is in the classroom. It's a very big one. You want to establish a relationship with the student. Now, how can you do that? What's the ways we can do that? Number one, we can just simply say, hi, my name is Teacher Carol. What's your name? And, and get them to see that this is my name. What's your name? And then use their name through the class time. That's a good one too. Use their name as much as possible. So if their name is Sam, then Sam, what did you do today? Or my favorite is, I ask my students every day, what did you eat for dinner? And then we talk about their food. And it's something I do with all of my students every day. And now my students ask me, what did you eat for breakfast? <laughs> and I usually will show them my, my uh, I will usually reach over and show them my banana peel. <laughs> and they all know I love to eat bananas for breakfast. <laughs> so build rapport with your student. Ask them questions. How old are you? What is your favorite color? These are all things you can do. So go ahead and take the time to establish a rapport with your student mock mentor. Just a few tips. I hope they help and have a great day.